I'm uh, Patricia Bacon. I'm the Executive Director for Blood Ties Four Direction Centre in Whitehorse, Yukon, and also I'm the Chair of Action Hepatitis Canada. Canada's comparison in the national scene on working towards elimination by 2030 is um, we are following behind, so we're certainly not in the pack of leaders that um, that maybe we ought to be. Um, so we are currently right now, if we continue in the same uh, light in terms of how many people we're testing, how many people we're diagnosing, how many people we're treating, we will not reach our elimination goals. Um, there are many other countries in the world that are on track for elimination, but Canada is not. Despite a lot of effort from advocacy groups such as Action Hepatitis Canada as well as a number of leading physicians and hepatologists in Canada that were asking for the new guidelines to include a recommendation for one-time screen for people born between 1945 and 1975, the task force came out with new screening guidelines that did not include a recommendation of a one-time screen for that population. Um, there, um, their rationale for not including that recommendation uh, was based on some sort of flawed data, um, some flawed uh, assumptions that they made. One, they made it based on some assumptions about the price of drugs, even though the price of drugs is coming down. Uh, it, they also used a model that looked at all adults as opposed to that adult population that's born between 1945 and 1975, which is very different. So when they s looked at all adults, they said it's not cost effective to, um, or it's not going to be, it's not going to really find those missing Canadians who are positive and don't know it uh, if we test all adults. But we weren't asking for that test. We weren't saying we should test every adult. We were saying we should be testing adults born between 45 and 75. And when you look at that data, it does suggest that that would be an appropriate thing to do because we would find a number of Canadians who are positive. So, uh, so the current screening guidelines, my recommendation as Chair of Action Hepatitis Canada um, is that even though the current screening guidelines don't, rec make, don't make a recommendation for a test between 1945 and 1975, I would say anybody born between 1945 and 1975 who is a Canadian citizen ought to get a one-time test. It's not like you have to keep testing over and over and over again um, because you're not probably not engaged in behaviors that are risk behaviors that would continue to put you at risk. But you may have been inadvertently exposed to viral hepatitis at some point in your earlier childhood years that had may have had anything to do with what you um, your behavior or not like it, it, a lot of the times what we're finding is is that that population were inadvertently exposed um, so get a one-time test and uh, a lot of leading hepatologists in our country would make the same recommendation we need to uh, first uh, beef up our prevention efforts so we need to get a far more innovative in our harm reduction strategies to prevent new infections and we need to be getting um, our prevention strategies and harm reduction. We need to do more in the remote rural communities. We need to be getting harm reduction scaled up in, pris in the prison setting as well. Um, and we need to be rolling out opioid um, substitution therapies more broadly as well. We also need to do more in terms of testing and screening. So there are probably anywhere from 40 to 60 percent of Canadians who have hepatitis, particularly hepatitis C, um, don't know it. They've never been tested, they haven't been screened, and they're not falling under the public health system radar in terms of being identified as people who ought to be screened. And those are largely people who are born between 1945 and 1975. So we need to beef up our screening and we need to do a one-time screen for all adults in Canada born between 1945 and 1975. That's the second thing we need to do. Uh, the third thing that we need to do is we need to beef up our, our treatment. <clears throat> Currently in Canada, we're treating about 6,000 people per year. We need to beef that up and we need to get higher than 7,000 annually, seven, eight, even 10,000 people annually. Um, because if you start looking at the numbers, if you're only treating 6,000 people a year, you have 
maybe 2,000 new infections per year. You have 250,000 Canadians with hepatitis C. If you do the math in 12 years, you're not going to reach elimination. So we do need to greatly uh, beef up our number of people that we're treating and we need to be more innovative in who who we treat and how we treat so right now uh, in the healthcare system in Canada treatment is still in the hands of specialists and as long as we have it only in the hands of specialists we have this bottleneck of getting people into treatment um, and we're also setting these um, unrealistic thresholds in terms of who should get treatment and we're still saying that people who have um, a liver fibrosis of F2 or greater get treatment and those who have a liver fibrosis score of F1 or F0 are not access are not um, qualifying for treatment. So we need to change that as well. Federally we need to have um, a, a national strategy. There needs to be a strategy that is focused on viral hepatitis and it needs to include the issue of prevention, it needs to include the issue of treatment, and as well as testing. So we see that the federal government needs to set the tone um, and have an adequately resourced strategy for Canadians on viral hepatitis. That strategy then needs to be, and it needs to also include pieces like surveillance. Like for example, we know that approximately 250,000 Canadians have uh, viral hepatitis. Um, C, but we're not actually sure if that number, how accurate that number is. So at the federal level, we need to see that strategy and that leadership in that strategy being set. At the provincial and territorial level then, we need each province and, strat uh, each province and territory to adopt that strategy and to um, filter, it needs to filter down into, at the provincial and territorial level, that willingness, that political uh, decision making to screen more of their population, screen those those um, adults born between 1945 and 1975, as well as to open treatment access. So we need to see that. So federally, we need to see the strategy. We need to see the feds sort of um, de demonstrate le leadership to the provinces and territories and get them to get on board uh, to, to, to open up treatment and to s open up screening. And the feds can set the tone in terms of prevention. So it, it, it has to occur at both um, government levels of government, for sure. So um, one of the things that we're seeing is, in terms of service providers, is again, it's, um, we're still holding <clears throat> the treatment of viral hepatitis C in the hands of the hepatologists. Now, that really made a lot of sense before we had the new DAAs because, um, well, first of all, it is a liver disease. It's not a simple liver disease. And the treatment was very complex. Um, but now what we know is with the new DAAs, for a number of people who have, um, how would I, straightforward hep C, like they're not, they don't have other health complications. The DAAs are highly effective, highly tolerated, low um, side effects that really um, a person could be treated in a different um, healthcare environment, for example, a nurse practitioner or a GP, somebody who might have what we would like to see in terms of a model is perhaps your GP or your nurse practitioner is the person who's working directly with the patient in terms of prescribing and treating their hepatitis C and that that nurse practitioner or the GP has access to, a, to the specialist who is helping them oversee a certain number of cases. And we see that model being well utilized in Australia and they've been able, with that a model like that, they've been able to open up treatment quite um, a bit more and they've been able to go from treating like three, four thousand people, Australians a year to greater than 15,000. So we do need to see um, alternative models of treatment. If we keep it um, strictly in the hands of the hepatologist and that the patient must see the hepatologist and the hepatologist must be the person that treats the patient, um, we're not going to be able to greatly increase our number of treatments. So we do need to see more innovation in that regard and, um, and, and I think that there's a lot of specialists who are very open to seeing that innovation as well.